are now going to start free boarding for United Airlines flight 2331 with service to Chicago O'Hare. If you are on boarding group 3, 4, or 5, please remain seated until your group number is called. Our Chase United card members that receive priority boarding benefits will be able to board and boarding group 2. I have no idea how long it takes. I'm guessing that people that get the, the best seats get to go first. We'll have to wait. We're in poverty class, so it's okay. Yeah. And the cheapest way to get a Tercel Wagon home flight, that's what we're in. Is probably by the baggage claims. Probably, yeah. Because he said it was somewhere up here on the center floor. I'm going to call him real quick. Hey, how's it going? We just landed. You said to stay on the second floor and take a right at the main like in information center, correct? Okay, left of that. Perfect. And then, yeah, we're out we're in the game. Okay. Yep, that is correct. Alright, cool. We'll, we'll, we'll get the wigger right there. Exit right now. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Which way is west from here? I don't know my north, south, east, and west because I'm. Do you have a compass on your phone? Airports sure are confusing. We think we figured it out. Our Uber should be here, hopefully right about now. <laughs> now where is our Uber? Uber's here. Ahoy there, YouTube. I'm out here. My buddy Alex. There he is, I couldn't find him. We are in Minnesota. Uh, we're a long ways from home. We got up at about three o'clock this morning and we took an airplane out and we are now, I don't remember the name of this city. We're in Minneapolis. Minneapolis, roughly. We're somewhere in Minneapolis. And uh, we have Dias, a Toyota Tercel wagon. Ah! So this right here, thanks to a help, big help with Alex, is my new 1983 Toyota Tercel four wheel drive wagon. And she is in pretty good shape. I'm pretty happy with this thing. A surprisingly pretty clean interior. I'm gonna do a little bit of deep cleaning on the uh, seats. Use some sem fabric dye to kind of clean this up in here and have to get that restitched back together. But it is full of parts, full of bits, full of pieces. He threw in a lot of extra parts and a lot of extra pieces with it. Um, we got our backpacks and everything back here. And then back over here, it's missing the parcel shelf, which is a bit of a bummer. But that's not the end of the world. I've got a few of those stashed. So, yeah, here's the back of it. He's got a nice carpet. Here's some extra parts. I don't know what all it has with it. I haven't yet to go through this. So we'll go through this together in a minute here. I'm just going to kind of finish up the walk around. It's got a hitch, and it's got some really cool retro stickers. So, so I don't know, pretty cool. Looks like I'm missing up the uh, little third brake light cover right there, but that's not a big deal. But, yeah, she's... It's really, really, really in sharp shape. There's a little bit of dirt and water right here. We were pulling the seal out to show the guy how water likes to collect inside of here. So that's just mud. We're going to give her a really good bath when we get home. She definitely could use it. But it's got wear window visors. It's got the OEM uh, aluminum wheels on it, which is super trick. And uh, came with a bunch of other stuff in the glove box too, which is pretty cool. So we'll go over and pop the hood. It's got a couple of cool things going on inside of there. It has an aftermarket cruise control system, which is pretty wild. He's, the guy said he had it on his uh, blue Tercel. He used to have a blue Tercel. I guess he's owned five over the years, he said. And this was his uh, his nice one. So it's in pretty good shape. It's been resprayed at some point in time. There's a little bit of stuff going on here under the hood. We'll have to do some cleaning up on. But that's pretty minor stuff to deal with. So... I guess that's really all for a quick walk around. Uh, we'll go ahead and check the parts out at the end of the video. I kind of want to just hit the road. We got 600 and like 60 some miles to drive home. So we're going to go ahead and hit the road pretty hard and pretty fast. Looks like it's starting to sprinkle outside right now. We're going to go stop off at a fellow lemons rally uh, 
friend's house and we're gonna check the transmission fluid make sure all that stuff's looking good so that we don't burn the tranny up and if all looks good we're gonna hit the road hard and hit the road fast and fly on home so uh, I guess we'll get rolling <laughs> update time we are still in Mississippi I think that's the state we're in anyway uh, we've been on the road for a couple hours now Alex has been driving for the last half hour to 45 minutes I went and took a nap because apparently Chipotle will really make you tired so here's where we sit uh, nothing really exciting to share the car's been driving great car's been shifting great car sounds great um, can't wait to get her home and get a couple little things finished up and tweaked and modified and improved on but uh, all in all, I'm getting eaten by bugs, and we're having a good time, so well, let's keep cruising, I guess. We are probably 300-ish miles into the journey right now. We are currently somewhere in Iowa. Just kind of road tripping our way home right now. Decided to stop off here for this cool scenic shot. I think this is the Mississippi River right here. Uh, yeah, car's doing great so far. Had zero issues, which is great. Uh, can't wait to get her, get her home and get her cleaned up. silence unfortunately we've been driving for many many hours we stepped up at a random gas station in Iowa filled up it's getting 30 miles a gallon so that's pretty awesome uh, and then they had Mountain Dew game fuel so uh, accidentally 18 of them uh, and now we're somewhere in Illinois uh, we've been on the road for many hours today um, we've been up for, for about 20 hours now and we still got about four hours to drive home yet so hoping to make it all the way home today Car's been running phenomenal. Had zero issues with it so far. Uh, 
which is amazing. So we're just going to keep hammering hard home, and hopefully she makes it all the way, doesn't give us any problems. And uh, so let's kind of go from there. We'll see what happens. I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. Oh, ahoy there, everybody. Forgive me for the radio silence uh, and the weird way of ending the video yesterday. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to open the door and hold the Mountain Dew Typhoon and hold the phone. I need a third arm. Ugh. So anyway, we got home at literally 4.30 in the morning last night. We left at about 4, so it was a long day. We were on the road for a long, long time, but it was 100% worth it because the car went phenomenally. Gave us zero problems. Uh, we didn't even have any oil. I checked the oil every fill up, and... It stayed right where it needed to be, so I'm super happy, super happy with how this car's been going. So let's do a quick walk around right now, and I'll show you guys some of the information that I've learned over the last uh, 12 hours on the road plus with it. Well, how many hours was it? I think we, we, we left the guy's house at 10 a.m. and got home at 4 a.m., so you do the math on how long that was. That's how long I had time with it. So anyway, overall, she is in absolutely phenomenal shape for what it is. Uh, there's a little bit of... Uh, trim fading going on here these are all starting to fade this is all fading right here and this trim is kind of really poorly put in so we are going to go ahead and pull that trim out clean everything up a little bit and then go ahead and uh, put a new windshield in it because the windshield does have a small crack right over in the corner right here i don't know how well the phone will pick it up in the sunlight but uh it was resprayed by Mako. I found a receipt in the stack of paperwork and documents that he had with the car. Uh, it was resprayed back in 2011 or 2012 or something like that. It was like a $3,000 Mako paint job. So, and it's not perfect. It has got a couple of uh, flaws and a couple of imperfections, unfortunately. But as any car does, he had a roof wreck on it at some point in time. And you can see it kind of chewed into the paint a little bit on the roof. Um, these are fading, so I'm going to clean these up alongside of here. And then the trim on the passenger side seems to be holding water pretty bad. There's a couple little imperfections in the body, but for a car that's from 1983, I am super stoked. It was assembled in December of 1982, which is not the newest or the oldest I've seen, but it's definitely an older car. So everything works really nice in here. The rear speakers don't work, so i got to look into that and figure out what's going on with that. But... Uh, and then it has an aftermarket cruise control module, which is not functioning right now. He swapped it from a previous car that he owned into this car and then mentioned that it never worked after he put it in there. So he just kind of gave up. So I'm going to do a little bit of digging into that and see what's up with that. Um, here are some of the parts that this car came with. There's a spare distributor down there, a spare water pump, and a tartar that was taken apart and cleaned and reassembled. And then some coolant, some brake fluid, some power steering fluid. There's Rain-X, which is phenomenal. I did notice it had Rain-X on it yesterday because we ran into some rain. Um, I am a huge fan of Rain-X. These aluminum wheels right here, I'm going to go ahead and get them repainted. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably sand them, clean them up, and repaint them. These tires have a little bit of weather checking in them, so I'm probably going to change them out too. I'm going to go ahead and give the paint a good wax. I'm going to swap out this busted taillight right here with one that's not busted. And then I have a better rear license plate frame right here that's not all cracked up. So I'm going to swap that out. <coughs> I'm going to repaint this red. And then uh, paint up all the, the wiper arms and stuff like that and repaint that red. And just do it overall a little little bit of stuff here and there to kind of make the car pop a little bit. I'll show you guys the back, show you the parts that the car came with, and I'll show you some of the spoils of war along our adventure. Uh, yeah, don't worry about the Mountain Dew. I, I have a problem. Uh, apparently Iowa only has game fuel, so I bought a lot. And then this is a Casey's exclusive, and there's really no Casey's here in Michigan. There's a few, but they're not within a reasonable driving distance. But, anyway, it came with a spare gas cap, a spare TEQ oil cap, and a temperature sensor. Um, all these Hot Wheel cars I got from a friend along the way. We stopped at a couple of different uh, Lemons Rally friends. There's two service manuals in here. One is, uh, both of them are Chilton, I think, which are a little bit different than the factory service manuals. So, I have another one of these. I've yet to really do too much digging into it. But I'm going to go ahead and kind of go through this a little bit later on and kind of see what notes and stuff he's found. Because there's tabs and stuff in all of these. There is some rear brakes. Looks like rear brake shoes. I'm going to cover up his address. He has some new shoes in there, which is cool. Um, what do we got? Looks like... Here's some ball joints. Got some spare wiper arms. And then this is awesome. Here's a bunch of notable things he's learned while owning 80 Stercell wagons. So I'm going to... 
flip through this and see what he uh, what he's found and what he's learned. See if there's anything in there that he can teach me, because I love learning. Uh, I've owned a lot of these cars, as you guys are probably pretty well aware, but I'm always always willing to admit that I don't know everything. So I'm interested to flip through that and read that. Um, here's a couple front wheel bearing seal or wheel bearing seal. Looks like this is probably the bearing right here. It is. And it looks like there's another set of brake shoes right here, potentially. Yep, another set of brake shoes with a receipt in there, which is cool. Looks like we got a couple wiper blade replacements, which is super trick. And then uh, looks like that's about it in here. So we got a timing belt, a spare timing belt. That's a really old box. That's really cool. And then it also came with a couple of headlights. I think that's all that's in this box right here is just a pair of spare headlights, which is always useful. You never know when a headlight's going to go out. And granted, they're at every parts store, but not really every parts store, actually. They're getting harder to find these days. But anyway, that's the car right there. So, yeah, that's just a quick walk around of it. Nothing else super exciting to share. I'm going to do a lot of cleaning on it. You can see some of the water that came out inside of here. Uh, just a matter of getting her shined up. I think with a good wax and a good paint and a good interior clean, this car would really, really, really pop. So that's going to be first up on the list to do. I really, really, really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, sorry, it was mostly just a bunch of boring time lapses. Uh, fortunately and unfortunately, the car gave us no problems, which made the whole journey go really smooth. But doesn't really make for great content. But I'm excited to get this thing cleaned up, get this thing shined up, and get some work done to her. So if you guys uh, want to check out future videos of it, feel free to subscribe. Probably make a playlist of this old girl and start doing some videos on it, some little stuff here and there. Probably won't be anything exciting, but I do plan on doing some maintenance and some other things on there sometime soon. So... Appreciate you guys watching, and I'll get you the next one. Adios.